Ultimately, if we're successful in bringing back the crubbery frog from the edge of extinction, it'll be because of team effort amongst very dedicated individuals. G'day Dave. G'day Richard. How are you? Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Oh, what's the morning like? Is it? Uh... Oh, fresh, but um, clear skies. So yeah, good yeah. day for the work. Yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, okay. So a pretty special day today. Very special day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this is the this is the first time that both Zoos Victoria and Taronga Zoo have brought up large numbers of eggs for release back into the wild. Okay. Dr. David Hunter has been working with this species for over 15 years, and here they are, the southern corroboree frog. It's hard to believe, but there may only be 50 to 100 left in the wild. This is due to a pathogen uh, called the amphibian chytrid fungus that was introduced into the Australian environment, we think um, sometime during the 1970s. And the thing about this pathogen is that it's actually causing amphibian declines and extinctions all around the world. In, that, in fact, they think several hundred amphibians may have been already driven to extinction due to this disease. The other main reason is habitat destruction. Um, habitat destruction is certainly um, one of the most re uh, biggest reasons why frogs are in decline. So today is all about accessing remote locations to put southern corroboree frog eggs that have been bred in captivity into the wild. Hillsville Sanctuary, Melbourne Zoo and Taronga are the three main facilities breeding southern corroboree frogs at the moment. And we're here sorting out our eggs and we've got the eggs in here because it's a cooler room in the hut. We want to keep the eggs between kind of four and five degrees Celsius max because that's going to be the temperature in the pools today when we put the eggs back out there. In terms of our operation for today, um, being able to use a helicopter to access some of the remote sites and having the pools as warm as they'll get through um, the solar radiation, um, this is perfect for, for what we need to do. So here we have all the, the eggs that have been produced at the zoos uh, this year and, and they're about to go in the chopper for their flight out to a couple of the sites where the tubs are set up. So this is a, uh, a breeding area for the southern corroboree frog and this is the, one of the main areas where we're doing our reintroduction. And the key to this reintroduction are these tubs. We've got Raylene here putting eggs straight into these tubs. When placing them in, we want them to, I guess, to initially to sink down to the bottom. Uh, and the reason for that is with the temperatures we're getting at the night time here, uh, it's foreseeable that the top of, they could get a sheet of ice over the top of the, uh, the tub. And if that's the case, there's a chance that there's a floating egg on top of could freeze. Once the eggs go into this water, that then stimulates them to hatch and then there's all the other food and requirements for the tadpoles in these tubs and they can then happily um, grow and develop through to metamorphosis. We've just um, put 50 eggs in this tub and then we'll go down to another tub and release another 50. Once we were finished there, it was back on board to fly to the next release site. So at each of these sites, as you can see here, we've got five of these tubs. Um, and that allows us to have replication in terms of the putting the eggs back into an individual site for our assessment, but also help, helps us understand patterns in terms of the success of this, this reintroduction program. I'm just checking to make sure they've all floated down. A final flight back to the hut, then we drove to the last release site for the day. I love the environment out here. I love having the opportunity to come out here and work in, as an ecologist in the wild. But in addition to that, I was one of those kids who had an absolute utter fascination with reptiles and amphibians. And as a small child, the crabbery frog just took my breath away when I looked at pictures of it in a, in a book. You know, if we were standing back here in five yeah. years, ten years time, what would you like to be saying to me? I feel very confident that in five to ten years time, um, I could be standing out here during the breeding season and we'd be listening to a breeding chorus of crabbery frogs. I feel very confident that that's what we're going to see. It's that sort of optimism and effort that makes a program like this succeed. And Dave Hunter, along with Mike, Raylene and their colleagues, may just revive the corroboree frog breeding chorus 
that is currently sorely missing in the Australian Alps.